So welcome everyone to today's webinar. We are joined again uh, by a number of, uh, of our friends over at Keyword Studios. So today I have with me Sabine Ernst, uh, Gio, and also Mafalda. And I would love to give you guys an opportunity to introduce yourselves, tell us what your role is at Keywords, how long you've worked in the industry, um, and how long specifically in gaming. Uh, so maybe start with you, Sabine. Thank you so much, Michelle, for having me this morning. Um, I have been with Keywords for a good one and a half years now, um, working in the trust and safety department, uh, responsible for creating um, superhero well-being programs. Um, in the industry, I've been for eight years uh, working in tech. I started uh, here in Kelowna at a little startup back then, Two Hat. We were then acquired by Xbox, Microsoft, and then I moved uh, yeah, one and a half years ago to Keywords. Very excited to be here. Lovely. Thanks so much, Sabine. Gio, do you want to go next? Yes, hi everyone. I'm Gio. I'm a superhero here at Keywords Studios Montreal. I'm a gaming commercial community moderator and I've been here for eight months. Okay. And last but not least, Mafalda. <laughs> Hello. So my name is Mafalda Praira. I'm originally from Portugal and I've been working for the gaming industry for the past five years. I'm the newcomer to the trust and safety. I've been a, a senior team lead for player engagement, previously player support for keywords. Happy to be here. Lovely. We've got a great diverse groups sitting in front of us, even from keywords. So I'll just dive into our first question. Um, so in the last webinar, I had briefly discussed how moderation teams in the gaming industry have a slightly different scope of practice than moderation teams on social media platforms or where there's kind of other user generated content um, that is being put out. So from your perspectives, could you share just some of the unique challenges that are faced in moderating gaming platforms specifically? Yes, so I guess it's a very interesting question to start. Um, to me, our players, they are totally focused on their games and their own universe. So I feel that one of our daily challenges here is understanding these uh, numerous narratives they bring in different game forums and there are a lot so even though you like and know about games and consoles you still have a lot to learn uh, in order to better understand what they are bringing to the forum uh, they may talk about a specific feature a new skin a new season that just started a new release or a problem they are facing so the topics are huge and the more you get into it the better you moderate properly and okay. i always keep here with me some valuable websites and sources to to access and research uh, but another very interesting challenge is the gaming language something that i'm in love with uh they have their own jargon to communicate their own lexicon mm -hmm. when they are expressing themselves which can make our job a little bit more challenging and we also have great online sources to research if we don't know and we also build here our own glossary here uh, so okay. of course over time like the game's narratives you learn and understand more these new terms and but they are creating new ones all the time so the main point here is whether the term does not refer to any derogatory or disrespectful meaning uh, but I also would like to highlight like all these skills uh, as a superhero we bring to the table when we are moderating here in our daily routine to face these challenges, like being aware about community guidelines, linguistic competences, uh -huh. uh, once you understand different languages, uh, awareness of bias, ability to engage with technologies we deal with here, um, identify and report threats to cultural knowledge, legislation, and understand like different topics uh, and worldwide events. So as our activity here, like it has a cognitive overload due to repetitive yeah. actions we take daily. We also need to be aware of ourselves while moderating, which can be a challenge too. So to me, the best approach is uh, we dive into their universe and it makes my job more pleasurable. Mm. And Mafalda, um, Sabine, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah. Definitely. I'll I'll take over from the community perspective because I am not just a newcomer to the trust and safety team, but also we are starting a new project. 
uh, that is a, a cutting edge streaming slash gaming community that is mm. just developing now. So the challenge is not just to, you know, keep the city safe. It's also to keep it thriving and generate this new uh, kind of vibe within uh, this new development. And also nurturing the guidelines that the client sees fit. So we're all combining efforts into a, a new sort of a dynamic when it comes to moderating streaming slash a gaming platform. Mm. So very, very different from other social media platforms, but now we're seeing new things. So um, as a newcomer to the trust and safety community, this is a wild. So how much uh, things move so quickly. So that's the the point I wanted to bring in. Um, how about you, Sabine? <laughs> I think you and uh, Jomani covered uh, pretty much everything. There is one thing that comes to mind, though, um, an additional challenge or a unique challenge, so to say, from my conversations with the superheroes is also uh, being the face of the game. Yet oh. uh, you didn't create it. And what do I mean by that? You get a lot of feedback, right? Some uh, players complain about maybe a feature. And so that unique position as, should I call it, you're nearly like a mentor between, well, you you want to you want to excite them about the game, right? Yet you also want to be very understanding. And sometimes maybe you even feel their pain, but yet um, you are not able to change anything. And you also you haven't been uh, in in uh, part of the product uh, process, so to say. So that just came to mind also as an additional uh, challenge that can appear. That's quite. Um like unique in the sense of I don't like I we've worked a lot with kind of social media companies and like e-commerce kind of like online platforms in that sense and not so much with the gaming industry and even to my ears that sounds very new that there's much more sort of player engagement even on like features and products side rather than just uh egregious content coming up um because a lot of the content moderators that I've spoken with they they don't really engage with the users in that way that maybe uh your kind of superheroes would so um, you are right. In, in it would maybe happen more in community management, but I can mm. also just the superheroes, um, Giovanni, maybe speak into it. Um, do you engage, or do you uh, like? I, I guess you read a lot about that feedback, but uh, do you then engage, or do you pass it on to the community management, or what's the process there? Maybe I can. Yes, actually, I do like to engage because, as I said, like once we we are. In their universe we understand them better you know what i mean mm -hmm. like of course the way that they interact with each other and of course the topics like even though they are talking about games they bring different topics inside it so of course like if we think for example about politics they sometimes they bring politics inside inside the game discussion they yeah. bring uh for example gender discussions pronounced discussions like of course i'm really into language because it's something that i like to observe but yeah i like to to read and understand like how they are engaging there how they are communicating and how, of course how they are changing the, the industry too so that's why mm -hmm. like in my opinion not only gaming uh, commercial community moderators should observe this but also developers ux designers to see how they behave online this is very interesting to understand and like how, of course, we think about the Gen Z, but we have like so many generations there in the same place, communicating, sharing like experiences, sharing their problems, but in a way that they are looking for the same thing, playing and have fun. So that's the idea of like when I think about media and behavior, how I understand them like through languages and through their interactions. So interesting. Um, yeah. So I suppose in terms of things like well-being offerings, um, how do you feel that keywords and other companies can encourage utilization in a meaningful way for your superheroes and for anyone else who has access to those? And, you know, we're talking about not just attending services, but truly getting a kind of meaningful benefit in engaging with those services. Nice. So I started here last June. And during my training, uh, I learned a lot about our well-being offerings. Uh, however, to me, the best way of encouraging superheroes to use them is to keep informing them of what we have here, something that I see here inside my, my team through our channels. But even though we have our monthly newsletter and SharePoints to inform people about it, a really great strategy would be to invest in testimonials, 
uh, asking mm -hmm. people who have accessed the app, for example, to share their experience, to show how easy it is to use it too. So in my point of view, uh, once we listen to someone who has already like tried or bought something, we feel more in encouraged uh, to try and get it. And in my training, I also learned uh, about a very interesting document that is our resilience armor. It's a personal mm -hmm. document uh, in which we consult if we have, uh, if you need to find ways to feel better instantly. So we know that it can be difficult to remember uh, what makes us feel safe yeah. and that's the purpose of it so to build it uh, we rate how we care about ourselves rating some areas like psychological emotional physical uh, then we check our coping mechanisms and in the end we have enough resources to build it uh, with things to remember when we are in distress and i have it written here uh, and also copy my computer so I can access anytime. And this part, this document to me uh, is part of our journey here since our mm -hmm. day one. So it's very important and I really like it to, to check and sometimes update it to use whenever I need. Nice little personalized toolkit. Yeah. I learned it so, with Sabine. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to just clarify uh, and go next to mention that I am not a superhero. I'm actually a sidekick. But because uh, it is quite uh, the dynamic to be shy and not want to, you know, come out of the dark, the vigilantes mm. here, um, I'm, I'm going to be their voice when it comes to uh, showing how much I've experienced at Keywords, the difference when it comes to nurturing the well-being of our teams. And that is my role right here. It's to make sure that the program is being followed. And it couldn't come at a better time, this question, because we are already meeting regularly to make sure that we are improving, that we are adapting, and that we are providing the best environment for the superheroes to thrive while they protect the city. And uh, one of the key elements that I've learned very early uh, since I arrived at Keywords is the concept of emotional equity. The fact that there's this relationship between the leads, uh, the program, and the superheroes, and then our users, that is definitely the biggest challenge, which is to make sure that all these tools are accessible, that they are being used, that they're not enforced. And the sidekick's role is just to make sure that everyone is aware that these things exist, that the feedback is coming from all areas and it is circulating, not just between the, the users, but also the creators of the community, the clients. Uh, and so it has been... Um, it's such a pleasure to see how the open communication fits within trying to adjust to everyone's individual needs because there's no such thing as one size fits all. Yeah. So constantly just renewing the program and making sure people are heard and the voices that matter really are here, the superheroes, because they're the ones dealing with this kind of work. So just wanted to clear that up. <laughs> no, but that's it's an amazing perspective, right? Because even at Ziva, we say all the time, you know, anyone who's a team leader or a supervisor, they're the frontline defense when it comes to superheroes well-being, right? When moderators are in distress, the first person that they're going to go to to say, I need a break or I need to like take a bit of wellness time or I need to be taken off a particular workflow. I'm having a hard time. The first person they're going to is their manager. So if their manager understands that that emotional impact could come up and then know how to direct them to the right supports and encourages everyone through that kind of open door policy and through that psychological safety, that's the best way that we can protect our moderators. Definitely. And I know Sabina has a lot to say about the program because we've been giving her a lot of feedback. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're actually mentioning one uh, important uh, part there, Mafala, is that feedback loop to create mm -hmm. that culture of discussion, feedback, right? Because from a manager and um, from a program manager perspective, I can say I am always asking myself, right, what is a meaningful way? And you mentioned it before, Michelle, it's not just providing the tool, but actually implementing a routine and not taking, which Mafalda mentioned before, the one size fits all approach, right? So that is always the first question that I ask myself. Secondly, it is the buy-in from the leadership uh, team. Mm -hmm. uh, that is key. If it doesn't work for the leadership team who are 
leading the superheroes, right, then um, what's the point? And so that is where we have uh, ongoing um, discussions, meetings. So what is the project that your team is working on are some questions. Um, what needs do we need to address? Does it work culturally? We have teams sitting in different countries, right? In some countries, an open conversation is preferred. In other countries, the culture um, uh, requires a more, maybe in a written form, right? So how do we perceive that feedback? How do we create that safe uh, environment? Talking about stigma um, that still exists in many cultures, right? And even in our own, we have to be aware of it. Uh, and um, so, yeah, those are questions that um, we discuss with the leadership team and making sure that there is a feedback loop um, so that it, the, the feedback comes back to us. And sometimes, yes, I do get the feedback. Sabine, this just won't work with my team. OK, then yeah. let's make a new solution, right? Third is really understanding the why behind the tools and the resources um, mm -hmm. and providing that leadership support. So making sure we really understand why do we implement that? What uh, maybe problem or challenge do we want to address? And then last but not least is really don't force. Lead mm -hmm. by example. And I had leadership teams coming back to me. They, they do an amazing job. And one even said, you know what, Sabine, I have one superhero. They just don't want to talk. They implement it in their one and ones also to touch on mental health, said they don't want to talk. So I just asked the simple question, is there something positive that happened since we met last and even there right that is also part of mental health think about yeah. something positive about something you can be grateful for and that is um yeah the the fourth point that we want to make sure that we don't force anybody but still encourage them leading by example um mm -hmm. doing exercises ourselves implementing practices ourselves and even sharing them like yeah um sharing that you know right our um the 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 head of of trust and safety department she shares with the superheroes she has a personal relationship with the superheroes and she shares how her day is going at times and so that to me is leading by example and being vulnerable ourselves to a certain degree and look yeah a hundred percent you know there's there's so much in terms of getting people to engage with services but there's even just so much in just having those conversations and fostering that environment where people feel safe to say I'm having a tough day it's just not great for me today right or to say that I'm having a really successful day I feel great um, because like you're saying that's also part of mental health right being able to celebrate your successes um, so it leads me kind of quite well into my next question which is given your experiences um, have you noticed any gaps in your well-being program or even just in well-being programming altogether in this industry that you feel need to be addressed immediately? Mm. In my point of view, uh, I couldn't consider a gap, but to mm -hmm. me, it would be awesome if we had more awareness about our programs after our training to be a superhero. And this is very mm -hmm. connected to what I just said about encouraging people through testimonials and tutorials. Because once we, we make people aware about what we have here, uh, they will take a look more often, you know what I mean? Like a SharePoint yeah. page, for example, with links, text, testimonials, tutorials. It's important to reinforce and highlight how important it is to take care of our well-being. And we never know when we need these resources. So I mm -hmm. guess now, after starting and having a big picture of our programs, uh, we should make superheroes more aware about it even more after our training, because in the training, we are excited to know about the company, our colleagues, our activities, our routine here. And there are so many things going on too. So this yeah. extra, yeah, this extra, this extra content um, would highlight that these programs are part of our journey here. And in this case, one idea uh, that I suggest, like to fill this awareness gap, we could have more content highlighting these numerous programs in each uh, monthly editions, for example, of our newsletter. And besides the page, like it would be awesome uh, having a webinar, for example, to share experiences, to discuss well-being from our perspective, like a superhero perspective, or maybe a podcast to interview superheroes. So, you know, the ideas, they we have a lot, but we still have like a, uh, this idea of sharing and understanding listening superheroes uh, to share, like how do we feel here in our daily routine? Yeah, and I think you you bring up a really good point there is that 
during training, there's just so much information that you're trying to yeah. consume about this new role that you've been hired for. So sometimes some of it can get, just get lost, you know? Um, yeah. So like even for myself, like with a lot of the companies that we work with, I'm always like, okay, when can we do a relaunch or when can we do like a spotlight, you know, six months down the line, you know, how do we check in with moderators at a more frequent basis during their first year, you know, in the company so that they're reminded that we're still here um, and that they can access our services at any time, right? Because you don't want people to forget that the supports are there when you're putting so much effort in to get people to engage with those supports. Yeah, because, for example, we, we come, we want to know, like, for example, the routine, then we meet, like, our colleagues, we understand, like, for example, all the technologies we're going to deal with, we understand mm. the platforms, like, our project, too. So, of course, like, during the training, you understand the programs, you understand everything, but, like, I feel like, okay, after the training, after I started my routine, like a month or two months later, can we have like something again, a training to understand like these programs, to check like if everything that I logged in, for example, the programs, it's working, if I can try or give it a try, try once, mm -hmm. just to check if everything working, because if you need some day, like it's already there. So of course, like the page would like highlight and, and of course the newsletter is like a, uh, a communication with us, like at least like highlight like this program so people can at least give it a try and, and check like once in a while. I wanted to add the onboarding experience is, is so uh, special that it does feel like we want to throw back after a while. So those six months mm. uh, kind of bliss point, I think, <laughs> is so crucial. And when it comes to this question, I just wanted to mention that it is a struggle to, you know, sometimes get to your um supervisor right like we we might have that emotional equity and so forth but it it is a challenge because you know we are overwhelmed with with uh the content that we're moderating etc uh but you know having that emotional openness to uh reach out and also to um provide the tools to those leads uh, who the superheroes reach out to. And that has been the gap that I always felt existed even in previous companies within the gaming industry. And we are already addressing it because uh, it's uh, fascinating that we are on that loop of open communication and we are mm -hmm. actually finding ways to give tools to leadership to uh, provide some sort of certification uh, and, and anything that could help the leads uh, provide better to make sure that those gaps do not exist between, you know, mm. the superhero being open to reach out, uh, whatever the reason may be. Incredible. I think for me, it's just my time to listen right now. I took some notes. So. <laughs> uh. Amazing. Always learning. <laughs> So are there any maybe services or offerings within your current program that you feel work really well to safeguard your psychological health? Yes, there's one that I really like. It's called Dialogue. It's accessible uh, anywhere here in Canada, 24-7, via our smartphone and online. And I really mm. like this service because, first of all, we can access it from our desk here and, uh, of course, at home. Or if you're in a bus going back home, you can access it. And from my desk, for example, I had an experience and it was really like interesting because I have never tried it. And it was a Saturday and I was here and I, I was reading a post that was harmful to me that time. So I decided to to try also to check its effectiveness and, and I love it and after this mm. experience it made me feel like so comfortable and protected to use it so we know that in these times it's hard to to express ourselves to understand the feeling that we are we are feeling so in that moment I had the assistant that I needed online and to make it happen this is very important to highlight uh, to have time to use dialogue I use it what we call here uh, my extra 30 minute mental health break so mm -hmm. it's a benefit inside my project inside my project in which we can take these extra 30 minutes after getting exposed to any harmful content right. to take a break to to drink some water and take my time and as we are in touch with it like daily if we need to use then we don't need uh, to talk to anyone just add in our platform that we are using this and leave and of course it's the, the time that i can uh, access my resilience armor too which works a lot to me so Amazing. yeah so dialogue to me it's a it's a very uh, helpful uh, app to use great 
I wanted to add that coming from a, a player engagement area to trust and safety, the difference when it comes to the focus being on well-being is just screaming. And also the fact that we still have a bit of a gap between uh, when we started working remotely and the tools we have to provide that wellness are still far behind the the actual needs. So I feel like so um, lucky to be in a department where that is the main focus and you mm. can tell already and I just want to grab it and you know tell all the other departments like this is the right focus to have uh, you will thrive once you start focusing on this and once you start realizing that remote work also has other challenges that yeah. we didn't think about before so not just technology has to constantly evolve with the industry but also we have to evolve with it and so I feel like outside counselors don't always know that particular challenges that moderators feel and also even within uh, specific departments that are parallel to the, the trust and safety one, it feels like there's a lack of understanding of what it really means to be exposed to certain content. So mm -hmm. I've always felt like there's a need to um, equip people who are in touch with the superheroes with that awareness of, okay, you're providing counseling, but also do you really understand where they're coming from? So we're trying to really nurture that kind of first eight champions mentality mm. where everyone has the tools to somewhat know where the boundaries are, but still be able to provide support no matter at what part of the um, community you're in. Yeah, and that's, that's I think it's really important probably for our audience to know is that like the role of a moderator encompasses so much, you know, it's there's so many different working parts to that job. And it is really, really difficult to understand what it's like if you're not actually doing it, right? So like as much as I've been in the industry and working with content moderators for the last five years, there's still a lot that I don't know about how the actual job operates. And I'm still always learning from content moderators. So to have a conversation like this, where I get to speak to moderators and they can tell me more about the way that they're working and what the challenges are, and that I can understand, you know, what are the factors outside of content that are impacting you? Are there operational processes? Are there tools? Are there policies even that like just don't fit? And for us to kind of collaborate with other departments and understand the, the finer details about what's working and what's not is really, really important. Definitely. So leads me into my last question. Um, there's a big movement, I think, within the wider trust and safety community to enhance that cross-discipline working in order to safeguard moderators' well-being. So talking to people in data science, in UX, in tooling, policy, all these different areas. Um, do you feel that there are any teams that you would like to have more contact with um, or that you feel would benefit from just understanding more about the challenges that you face um, when you're doing content moderation work? Okay, I love this question. I'm a very curious person. And uh, sometimes when we don't find like specific information in a reliable source for a about a game, for example, uh, I think like I wish I could talk with the devs or UX designers to get it mm. easier and faster. So to me, I would love to be in touch with them. Uh, as we deal with uh, different games and narratives, uh, it would be very helpful to get information with them if we need it. For example, when we have a game releasing and we haven't played it yet, for example, we have like mm. the information that media publishes, but the players are complaining about something or caring about something specific. If we had a chance to talk and ask a question to these people just to have a big picture of it, it would be very helpful. And I do like this cross-discipline perspective because we get in touch with fields that we work with, but we are not in the middle of the process. And mm -hmm. as a journalist, uh, I would have great questions to ask them and make my job like <laughs> more interesting. You know what I mean? Yeah. I would like to add that the point we brought in earlier, how the the clients, the developers need to be open and flexible. It's just 
a blessing because we are part of this, you know, pilot new kind of technology that we're facing and moderating and creating the community for. This loop of feedback is so crucial. And I must say that it's been a pleasure to work with such an open client that is, you know, learning with us. And honestly, the fact that it's a two way street where, mm-hmm. you know, we have veterans, we also have new superheroes that are working with this new community. And that open communication is so essential that, you know, they are reaching out to their um, tech people with the developments, with the trust and safety departments and making it more seamless and so forth. It's just, it's a requirement that all parts communicate. And when you do experience that firsthand and see that they understand that the focus on well-being first is something we have as a value that we share, um, that's quite unique and that's where the industry needs to get to. So I'm very lucky to say that I've been experiencing that uh, more than ever before within the trust and safety department and with this uh, partner that we have. And it's actually our first anniversary because Keywords has been working with them as a consultant for over a year. So there's a lot of trust in this. So Amazing. Really happy. <laughs> ah, I mean, it's always nice to hear when the cross-discipline work is going well, uh, because I think a lot of the time we talk about the challenges that come with trying to work cross-discipline. So it's it's amazing to hear that this partner that you have is working really well with you and that it feels like it's a two-way street and that you're learning from each other, you know? Definitely. I'm a lucky person right here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that brings us to the end of uh, today's webinar. I don't know. Did you guys have anything else that you wanted to highlight before we finish up? All good. Well, listen, thank you very much for taking the time. I really appreciate it. I know that you guys are very busy. um, So thank you very much for joining us in today's webinar. And we look forward to uh, having Keyword Studios back for the last webinar series uh, next week. Thank you very much.